Next on the news, they escaped war-torn Ukraine and are seeking refuge in the Diocese of Brooklyn. I'm Jessica East Hope with the story of a mother and son who put their lives on the line and never looked back. And as that refugee was welcomed here with open arms, Ukrainian President Zelensky spoke before Congress, making an impassioned plea to President Biden for help to end the Russian aggression. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. Also, the Federal Reserve raising interest rates to fight soaring inflation. What does it mean for the average person? Congratulations are in order for the 8th graders at St. Saviors after an impressive win at a robotics tournament. I'm Christine Persichetti. Currency News starts right now. A harrowing journey from war-torn Ukraine. A mother and son fled the country and made it back to the United States. They came to the Diocese of Brooklyn to pick up the pieces and start over. A first step, enrolling at St. Athanasius Catholic Academy. Current News' Jessica Easthope has the story. For fifth graders at St. Athanasius Catholic Academy, it's just another day. Science and math problems. Yes. But 11-year-old Theodore Gaynulin's problems have gone far beyond this classroom. Yeah, I'm afraid of the war, Russia. It's uh, dangerous. Uh, and I scared there was boom. Uh, and I, I was scared. This time, two weeks ago, Theodore was walking with his mom, Ellen, and thousands of other Ukrainians through endless villages along the western border, hoping to make it safely to Poland, not knowing what the future would hold. All schools broken, at home broken, and Ukrainian people are dying. I was framed. Nobody knows what's going to happen, like next minute, next hour. With just the clothes on their backs and one bag for both of them, Ellen and Theodore walked nearly 15 miles from Lviv to the border. Ellen, who lived in Brooklyn for 17 years, had one dream for her son. That vision kept her feet moving. I made a decision that he is going to be, when he's going to be back, I got to enroll him here. And my friend asked me, what school? And I said, this nice Catholic school. St. Athanasius principal Diane Compatello says the school has welcomed Theodore with open arms. How do you say no? God sent them here. If we say we're for everybody's kids, that's who we are. Knowing that Theodore and Ellen have been through a lifetime of trauma, their new school and new church want to make their home in Brooklyn a safe haven. We offer them hope in the midst of such conflict. We offer them probably the greatest gift, God. God's love, which I'm sure they need very much right now. Please check your work. For now, Theodore so says he's excited to be living the life of a normal fifth grader, far away from the terrors of war. Here, he's happy for it to be just another day. In Bensonhurst, Jessica East Hope, Currents News. St. Athanasius isn't the only school supporting Ukraine. Students at St. Luke's Catholic School in Whitestone also doing their part. They dressed in yellow and blue in solidarity with the people of Ukraine and as part of a dress down fundraiser. They also created a giant sunflower featuring individual prayers for peace and decorated smaller sunflowers that hung in classroom windows. The school also collected items to send to Ukraine. St. Adalbert's Parish in Elmhurst has already raised thousands for Ukraine. Parishioners donating $14,000 for the cause. $10,000 collected during masses and more than $4,000 donated online. That money will be heading to the Franciscan friars, both in the country and in Poland, who are serving the people there and helping the refugees trying to flee. Currently, friars stationed in Ukraine are helping people find shelter as well as providing essentials such as food and medicine. Here's an inside look at the work the friars are doing in the country. Приїхали, нас тут зустріли, розмістили, накормили, напоїли, обігріли. Хоча нас і їсти нам навіть не хотілося після таких 
перші або другий день я приїхала сюди, бо знала, що тут прийма, будуть приймати біженці. І вирішила їм допомогти, зокрема, тут вікна допомогти облаштувати. Про центр біки серед я вже знаю давно. Я давно волонтерю саме ну, в цьому центрі. Мав в нашому домі милосердя, діяв дошкільний простір «Ангелики» де перебували діти, навчалися, виховувалися. В стінах цього дому довелося зробити з нуля кухню, облаштувати бомбосховище. Люди можуть помитися, можуть попрати свої речі. Маємо близько 20 біженців, цей матері з дітьми. Що ви зробите перше, коли Україна переможе? Я казала, я розвішу візді прапори на, ну, по, по всьому домі і буду цілувати говорю, рідну землю. Євросоюзу, громадяни країн європейських повинні побачити і зрозуміти, що те, чим вони живуть, можливо, цього зараз не доцінюють, але має надзвичайно велику цінність. І наші люди тут в Україні, і наші військові платять це, за це, платять своїм життям. A Polish friar had this to say about the Franciscans' efforts for refugees. All our houses are ready. All friaries are opened for them. A standing ovation from Congress for Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who appeared before the lawmakers. He shared with them a heartbreaking video of what is happening right now in his homeland. President Zelensky directly asked for the U.S. to do more to help his war-torn country, asking President Biden to be a leader for peace. President Biden responded with new promises of aid, but not with everything Zelensky is calling for. Karen Kaifa reports from Washington. President Joe Biden responding to a direct appeal from Ukraine. The American people are answering President Zelensky's call for more help. In impassioned virtual remarks before a joint session of Congress, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky expressed gratitude to Biden for U.S. help so far, but asked for more. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. Many lawmakers were visibly moved by Zelensky's speech and references to America's darkest days struck a chord. In one sense, his speech was reminiscent of the stirring feeling all of us had in the aftermath of 9-11. Biden signed off on an additional $800 million in security assistance to Ukraine, including anti-tank missiles and more defensive weapons. But among many lawmakers and at the White House, there is opposition to Zelensky's request for a no-fly zone over his country, fearing it could lead to direct conflict with Moscow. Lawmakers are considering other options. There is bipartisan support for sending a package that includes fighter jets and air defense systems to the Ukraine immediately so that we can have a Ukrainian no-fly zone manned by Ukrainian pilots. The aid announced Wednesday brings the U.S. total of assistance to Ukraine to $1 billion over the last week. In Washington, Karen Kaifa, Currents News. Russia has attacked a theater where civilians had been taking shelter. There are reports that the Mariupol Drama Theater was flattened by a bomb. Hundreds were said to be staying there. There's no word yet on casualties. Meanwhile, the mayor of Kyiv is asking the Pope to visit. He sent a letter to Pope Francis asking him to travel to Ukraine's capital because his presence will be a strong gesture for peace. Let us make Kyiv the capital of humanity spirituality and peace. The Pope has sent two cardinals to Ukraine to show his closeness to the people there. Traveling to Kyiv would be logistically complicated for the Holy Father, but Francis doesn't shy away from visiting war zones. Earlier this week, we spoke with the editor of Crocs, John Allen, about that. If Pope Francis were to go to Kyiv, uh, this would not be the first time he has gone to an active war zone. Uh, he did so in the Central African Republic uh, a few years back. Uh, he was so determined that he told the, pli the pilots on his Alitalia flight that if they didn't feel they could get him there safely, they should just give him a parachute because one way or the other he was going. But John went on to say that at the moment the security situation in Kyiv would probably make such a trip impossible. The Vatican is sending its prayers to the people of Ukraine. Uh, 
a mass for peace in Ukraine was held on Wednesday at St. Peter's Basilica. Cardinal Pietro Parolin celebrated the mass for ambassadors accredited to the Holy See. The Ukrainian and Russian ambassadors attended and prayers were read in both languages. The Bishop of Brooklyn, Robert Brennan, is calling on the faithful to act. You can give aid and support to our Ukrainian brothers and sisters in need by donating to the Diocese of Brooklyn's Compostela Fund. 100% of the money collected will provide direct assistance to those affected by the war. Just make a check payable to the Compostela Fund of the RC Diocese of Brooklyn with the notation Ukraine and mail it to Diocesan Finance Office, 310 Prospect Park West, Brooklyn, New York, 1121. You can also give online at catholicfoundationbq.org slash Ukraine. There's a lot more news headed your way. Will a Fed rate hike stop out of control inflation? And exactly what does the move mean for you? Also, words matter. That's why a sign posted outside a church created an outcry among parishioners. We'll tell you what it said. And hope for people suffering with an uncommon and unpleasant symptom of COVID-19, a change in the way food tastes, how this condition can be successfully treated. Church is supposed to be a place that welcomes all, but a sign posted outside of St. Mary's Church in South Omaha, Nebraska, made people feel anything but welcome. Monday, the Archdiocese of Omaha received a flurry of complaints after a volunteer put up this message on the church's marquee reading, heaven has strict immigration laws, hell has open borders. It's a message that didn't go over well with the area's large immigrant community. It didn't feel right. Uh um, reading it and what they were trying to state and kind of kind of threw me off because it's church. It's kind of letting you know that because of your background that you can be led into heaven. The church has since replaced the sign with one that reads Lo Siento or Sorry. And apologizing to the community, the Archdiocese of Omaha released this statement saying, A St. Mary's Parish volunteer made an offensive and inexcusable mistake. The volunteer has been removed from his duties. St. Mary Parish and the Archdiocese of Omaha apologize to anyone who has been hurt by the marquee message. Both the parish and the Archdiocese have enjoyed a long-standing relationship with our Hispanic brothers and sisters living in the city. One person's mistake will not weaken this valued relationship. The Federal Reserve has increased interest rates. The quarter point hike will eventually mean higher loan rates, but the hope is it will also curb inflation. The goal of raising interest rates is to combat inflation and lower prices for consumer goods. The Federal Reserve has kept rates at zero since the pandemic started. That's helped the economy by helping businesses and consumers borrow and spend money. The housing market is incredibly critical. Uh, shelter costs are the number one expense for most American households. That ability to spend has boosted demand for big ticket items, but now supply is struggling to keep up. Add to that rising energy costs. Russia is the largest energy producer, producer, but even before that, costs were rising, as we know, because of the COVID-19 disruptions to the supply chain. New numbers show a 7.9% increase in the consumer price index year over year. The cost of food has risen about 8%. Energy is up almost 26%, and relief is unlikely to come soon. Almost any category you can imagine that the consumers spend money on, those also went up. Uh, generally. So uh, yeah, next month I think it's going to be pretty painful. Inflation is so bad, some experts worry about a recession. Inflation is the one killer. It is a tax. Inflation is a tax no matter how you look at it. And you've got to get your financial house in order. The hope is that an interest rate increase will lower the cost of living for average Americans. Right now times are tough and I'm trying to make things meet and stuff. This is the first time the Federal Reserve has raised rates since 2018, and policymakers project six more similarly sized increases throughout the year. A fourth COVID shot could soon be deemed necessary for people over 65. At least that's what the CEO of Pfizer believes. On Tuesday, the pharmaceutical company, along with its partner BioNTech, requested emergency use authorization for a second booster shot, saying that two doses and one booster will not be enough to defend against new variants. 
So far, a fourth dose is only recommended for Americans with severely weakened immune systems. As for the 17 million Americans who received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, new CDC data suggests that the single dose shot is proving to be just as effective as its Pfizer and Moderna counterparts. This after health experts spent more than a year saying the Johnson & Johnson shot was the least effective vaccine in the U.S. And while the reasoning isn't clear, officials believe the new data warrants further investigation. One of the symptoms of COVID is a loss of taste and smell. For most, it goes away pretty quickly, but for others, it lingers. And for some, it can cause food to taste awful. One teen searched for help and found a treatment that appears to work. Waverly Monroe has the story. This is Reagan eating her favorite food, pasta, something she hasn't had for the last nine months. It was like so relieving just to be able to taste food. Back in May of 2021, Reagan got COVID and through that she developed parosmia where the food she normally loved now smelled disgusting and doctors could not figure out why. And they were like, this is going to last forever, like you're never going to be fixed. And so I got in the car and I was like crying. Then Reagan's mom, Heather Springer, found a post on Facebook where a pain specialist was administering shots that helped her condition. I called like that night. And before Reagan knew it, they were off to Texas where they met David Gaskin. It's changing people's lives. Gaskin gave her a stellic ganglion block, two shots in her neck. The stellic ganglion is a collection of nerves found in the neck. The shots help reboot that system giving relief for people with parosmia. From the time they injected her to the time she was able to like eat food and smell food and see a difference was like such a short amount of time. Gaskin says the procedure is not new and only recently began being used to treat parosmia. Gaskin says he has a 90% success rate once people started to hear about it on social media. He says his schedule quickly filled. I just treated a gentleman yesterday from Israel. Um, <laughs> he came, he, he flew 19 hours um, to come from Israel to, uh, to have the injection. He says he's happy to help. Watching patient after patient come in and, uh, and cry with joy. You know, my whole staff is crying. I'm crying. It's a, it's a, it's a tough day, you know, uh, but a, a great day. And even though the shots help break and smell, it's still not 100% bad. I had chicken wings the other night and it's fine, mm. but then like grilled chicken's pretty bad. Springer says Reagan's parosmia is now manageable and she credits those shots. If I could do it over again, I wouldn't change anything. We would definitely go back, get, maybe get it a little bit sooner. After nine months, Reagan can finally go back to being a teen. I've been like a lot better. I've, I'm a lot happier and I'm able to do like a lot more with my friends and stuff like that. That was Waverly Monroe reporting. Losing the senses of smell and taste were some of the most common symptoms of COVID. But as we said, for most people, those returned quickly. Still to come on Currents News, a very impressive win for students at St. Xavier's after competing in a prestigious robotics tournament. And this. We're all God's children and so we should all do what we can to help. A talented teen turns to her art to help the people suffering in Ukraine. Congratulations are in order. The two eighth grade robotics teams at St. Savior Catholic Academy both placed in the top five at a robotics competition Sunday. It was a big win for the Demericorns. I hope I'm saying that right as they took first place at the New York City first Lego League Robotics Championship, earning themselves a spot at the national competition in Texas this spring. And the school's other team, Cargo Room, also had a great showing, taking fourth place in the city competition. Meanwhile, students at St. Joseph the Worker also competed, coming in second place with their innovation project. After an exciting season, the Catholic High School Athletic Association Boys Basketball League has showcased some amazing all-stars. The tablet newspaper is giving them a nod, detailing the MVPs from around Brooklyn and Queens. Plus, you can see some other sports standouts, such as those leading the way in women's track. To see these stories and more, you can pick up the tablet at your local church or get it sent directly to your mailbox. Just go to thetablet.org and subscribe. Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, and you can celebrate the Irish Saints Feast Day from the comfort of your own home. Net TV will be airing the Mass from St. Patrick's Cathedral live tomorrow, starting at 8.30 a.m. Again, that's Thursday, March 17th at 8.30 a.m. You can also tune into Currents News for complete coverage of the Mass and Parade.
And finally tonight, painting with a purpose. A young teen capturing the beauty and history of Ukraine's top cities, all while raising money to help the people there who may now be searching for a new place to call home. Claire Kopsky reports. To say 14-year-old Ella Bramlett is talented is an understatement. I've been painting my whole life. She and her brothers also play the violin at places like the Ryman, the Skirmerhorn, and the Grand Ole Opry. The arts is very much in my family. Two years ago, she started leaning into her artistic talent, selling her artwork. I've tried a bunch of different mediums and everything, and um, I don't know, I feel like watercolor has just been the one that I've connected with most. Up until a few weeks ago, her work had been a way to express herself. But then as the conflict in Ukraine started, her work quickly became about others. We were all watching the news together and I'm always painting when I'm watching TV. So I, um, we were like witnessing Kiev being bombed and it's heartbreaking to think about. I looked up a few pictures of Kiev and just started painting it. Within a few days, Ella painted two Ukrainian cities, Kiev and Kharkiv. While we were visiting with her, she painted another one, Maripol. Those are two others that have been really influenced by all the bombing and stuff, and it, those are two of the other hardest hit cities. Ella started selling her prints of Ukraine cityscapes on her social media pages, donated 100% of the profits to Sea Star Kids and Eastern European missions. It's something that concerns everyone because we're we're all people and we're all God's children and so we should all do what we can to help. For her, that's painting cities that may no longer be the cities its people remember. In Nashville, Claire Kopsky. You can see more of Ella's paintings and even have the chance to buy them online. Just search for Ella Bramlett Designs on Facebook. And that is Currents News. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. We'd like to end this newscast with a prayer for Ukraine from the Pope. Hope to see you again next time. Cari fratelli e sorelle, nel dolore di questa guerra, facciamo una preghiera tutti insieme. Perdonaci la guerra, Signore. Signore Gesù Cristo, Figlio di Dio, abbi misericordia di noi, peccatori. Se continuiamo ad uccidere il nostro fratello, perdonaci se continuiamo come Caino a togliere le pietre dal nostro campo per uccidere Abele. Perdonaci se continuiamo a giustificare con la nostra fatica la crueltà se con il nostro dolore legittimiamo le ferratezza dei nostri gesti. Perdonaci la guerra, Signore. Perdonaci la guerra, Signore. Signore Gesù Cristo, Figlio di Dio, ti imploriamo. Ferma la mano di Caino. Illumina la nostra coscienza. Non sia fatta la nostra volontà, non abbandonarci al nostro agire. Fermaci, Signore, fermaci. E quando avrai fermato la mano di Caino, abbi cura anche di lui, il nostro fratello. O oh, Signore, poni un freno alla violenza. Fermaci, Signore. Amen.